I'm practicing my animation skills, so here's a short video about braid groups and configuration spaces. Even if you don't know much of this math, you can still look at the pretty pictures. In topology, we look at shapes like this, or this, or even this. We want to measure features of the shapes which persist when you wiggle things. You can stretch and pull it, but don't cut it or glue it. Like the hole here, it stays like a hole even when you bend the shape around a bit. One basic way to measure what kinds of holes are in a space is what they call the fundamental group. You start with some point called the base point, and then you consider all the different loops you can draw starting and ending at that point. There's lots of loops you could do. Those two ones we consider to be really the same because you can stretch one of them around to make it look like the other one. But this one here, you could stretch it a little, but there's no way to shrink it down to those other ones because of that hole in the space. We don't really think of loops as these curvy lines that you can see on the picture. It's better to think of the loop as a record of a journey of a moving point. It starts at the base point, goes on a little trip somewhere, and comes back to the base point. When you consider all the different ways you can make loops in this way, you get what they call the fundamental group, which they write like this. With a different shape, you would get a different set of loops. So the fundamental group is one way you can tell the difference from one shape to another. A configuration space is what you get when you start with a shape and you consider configurations of two points, just any way you could pick two different points. This is called the configuration space of two points on our space, written like this, F2 of X. F is for, I don't know, that's just how they write it. Or you can do it for three points or any number of points. Now, what if we try that same thing with the loops, but for configurations? For a configuration of two points, a loop would look like those two points, each doing some loop and ending up back where they started. Remember, they have to stay two different points the whole time. They're not allowed to collide with each other. It looks like the loops here meet, but that's okay, because the points themselves do not meet. The real way to see what's happening is like this. We break out the time into its own dimension. I'm going to do the same motion, but I'm going to make the points go down at the same time. Then the loops form these sort of corkscrew paths downwards. These paths aren't allowed to pass through each other, because that would mean that the points up top are colliding. This kind of shape is what mathematicians call a braid. Here's one with three points. Remember, the points can't touch each other. Probably won't surprise you that braids are used in the modern theory of coordinated motion planning algorithms, among other things. When we set everything up like I did here, the only braids you could ever get are ones where each point at the top ends up at the same location at the bottom. This is what they call a pure braid. And this is either a cute theorem or a deep definition depending on your point of view. A loop in a configuration space is the same thing as a pure braid. In fancier language, the fundamental group of a configuration space of n points is isomorphic to the group of pure braids on n strands on your space. Here's a little variation. What if when we consider the configuration space, we don't pay attention to which point is which? Like, I just have some points, but it's not like a blue one and a red one. In that case, we can get loops that look like this. This is called the unordered configuration space on n points, written like this, dn of x. And the theorem about braids in that case is this. The fundamental group of an unordered configuration space on n points is the full group of braids on n strands. Looking at the types of braids you can get is really a sophisticated way to measure features of our original shape. Like if we start with just a disc, the strands could wrap around each other. This is called the classical braid group. But if the original shape has a hole in it, then the strands could wrap around each other and also wrap around the hole, and the braid group is more complicated. More holes gives you more types of possible braids. There's a weird history to this connection between braids and configuration spaces. Everything I just said was noticed by Hurwitz in the 1890s, but nobody really thought much of it at the time. Once group theory was a bit more developed, the classical braid group was defined by Artin in the 1920s, apparently without any knowledge of Hurwitz's work. It wasn't until the 1960s that Fox and Neuwirth finally made the connection to configuration spaces. But even then, they didn't realize that Hurwitz had done the same idea over 70 years earlier. This whole theory gets really interesting when we start with a curved surface. It's harder to visualize because we're already using three dimensions to draw the original shape itself. If you want to see the braids accurately, you need a four-dimensional diagram, which is a little beyond my animation skills. Hey, let's do a real-world example. 
I put 10 beads in this little thing and jiggled them around a little. I made them all stop at the same places where they started. So this makes a loop in the configuration space of 10 points. And that motion determines a 10 stranded braid. That's twisty.